we sing our way to the association because the Phoenix Suns, uh, DeAndre Ayton is about to become a restricted free agent and all NBA teams can start to make offers with the Suns being able to match. However, looking at max contract options, the Suns would have to give Ayton an extra year and almost three million more per season compared to the rest of the NBA. Here's more from our very own Adrian Wojnarowski on Phoenix and their options with Ayton. I think there's a lot of sign and trade options uh, scenarios out there uh, that they'll be able to start working through once we get the Thursday that Suns have had a reluctance to give DeAndre in a max contract but I do believe it's available to him out in the marketplace can they find a package of assets back that makes sense for them all right Courtney I'm going to start with you is the Suns championship window closing very quickly it doesn't have to close if they're okay. aggressive in what they do in free agency. Let's not forget, this is a team that was first in net rating, fifth in offense, third in defense, and fourth in effective field goal percentage last season. Last I checked, that makes a very good basketball team. But the way that they played against Dallas, that's our lasting memory of Chris Paul at 37 years old absolutely disappearing in that series. Devin Booker wasn't great either. Like, they have a lot of holes that they have to fix in order to upgrade this roster to contend in the West. Now, what Woj was saying about DeAndre Ayton is interesting. I like the idea of a sign-and-trade for the Phoenix Suns. I'm just not so sure that you're going to get a star player in return. But if you can get some role players, get some guys that can fill out the rotation for the Phoenix Suns, I say do it because... Because it's clear that there's a reluctance from this team to give Aiton what he's eligible for on the rookie max extension. So if you can find another team, and trust me, there's plenty that see what this guy did two years ago in their run to the NBA Finals in the way that he played against other big men, there's going to be teams that want a young, talented center in the fold. So I think that they could get a considerable package back. I'm just not so sure in terms of finding another star to go alongside Chris Paul at this point of his career and also to, to align with Devin Booker that you're going to get that. But if you want to contend in the West, you have to be aggressive in free agency and throughout the rest of this offseason if you're the Phoenix Suns because everybody else will pass you up because everybody else is getting better. I'm not sure what Phoenix should do. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tricky call. For whatever the reason, you would think this would be a no-brainer. He's a young center. He's played pretty well. And they're, they're, they're thinking about not giving him what he wants from a max standpoint. Yeah. Maybe they know more about the player than we do. Yep. you got to keep that in mind. But he's a – listen, he's got a lot of talent. He's good going to the basket. He can make a 12-foot jump shot. He's athletic. Um, I'm going to – I don't think the window's closing, though. Okay. Because I do think that with Booker, you have to figure Paul, after he did an absolute no-show and was a disaster and got destroyed by Donkic in Game 7. Donkic had 27 points in the first half of Game 7, and Paul did not score. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be one of the great point guards in the history of the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you would think that that would fuel Phoenix. Right. So I, they did win 64 games. So I would think, like Courtney said, I would think the window is still open. I just don't know what to do with the center. That's a very tricky call. It's interesting. I'm glad you raised the point because whatever's going on, Chris, with DeAndre Ayton and Phoenix, whatever personality conflict is going on, usually a guy like that about to get into the prime of his career in a new age NBA, that way he can play. They give him the money. They would have given him the money already. They, they, already. they, they, they have not, yeah. right, they haven't even been hesitant. They basically said, no, we're not giving this to DeAndre Ayton. Mm -hmm. Based on that alone, I'll say that their championship window is closing because you and Courtney made the point in terms of the Western Conference. More than ever before, second by second when it comes to professional sports. You can't just be in the middle. You either got to be here high, you got to be low. Phoenix right now is a high team that won 64 games in the regular season, like you mentioned. But now the question is that they don't resign DeAndre Ayton, then who's going to replace him? Do you go out to Rudy Gobert in free agency and bring to be a rim protector where he can do screen and roll but doesn't have the offensive skill set that DeAndre Ayton possesses? Chris Paul's not getting any younger. The NBA is getting younger, but Chris Paul's not getting any younger. And everybody now has a blueprint to say, if you attack and wear out his legs, you're going to wear out that 37-year-old point guard. Yeah. He's not going to get to being an elite point guard once again because of his age. And that's not a knock on Chris Paul. That puts a lot more pressure on Devin Booker and Mikhail Bridges. And they're hoping that whoever's the backup point guard, they get somebody else or they go with the young man behind Chris Paul, that he can do that. He's not ready to be a primetime player. When you got all those questions surrounding a team that won 64 games and, like you said, 
Luka Doncic has had his way. It looked like, you know, he made what I call cir circus shots. Where you do that, <laughs> and you can ride the elephant in a circus. And that's how he destroyed Phoenix in that game seven. If that's yep. going to continue to happen, that's why I think the championship windows closing. That was one of the most embarrassing game seven home losses in the history of the NBA. I agree. They got booed off yeah, the court with yeah. a team that won 64 games and went down 40 at the half, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Yeah, that would have never happened in the 80s and 90s. No. It Bob Cousy. Never happened. Wouldn't it happen that with Bob Cousy? That completely negated everything they had done. You're not drawing me offside for the whole J.J. <laughs> Reddick thing. Uh-uh. I'm not doing that. Uh-uh. Oh All right, Courtney, come on in, Bess, please. Please help me out here. I mean, like, just take a look at everybody else's roster in the West. Take a look at the Golden State Warriors. Take a look at a team like the Clippers that all of a sudden now has you know, incredible odds to, to contend for a championship. And, you know, like we've talked about, that's a team that has failed to meet expectations over the last few years in spite of the talent that they have on their roster. So if you're not getting better, if you're not being aggressive in trying to upgrade some of those spots and, you know, like, like, uh, Mad Dog was talking about with Chris Paul at this point of his career and finding you know somebody else to be a pick and roll partner. Uh, if you do move on from DeAndre Ayton, I'm not so sure there's that many upgrades on the offensive side at that position. Rudy Gobert's not that guy; he's a rim protector for you. But DeAndre Ayton will give you more from an offensive standpoint. I'm not sure who they have in mind. Like that's the thing that I try to rack my brain about here because it feels like you have a young center who is an incredible two-way player, what's the problem? Why are you not giving him the extension? So is there something more that we don't know about? Potentially, but this to me seems like a no-brainer. I just don't understand why they've been hedging this entire time, and they can't afford to do that because of what everyone else in the West, those who are actually contending for a championship, trying to chase where the Golden State Warriors are, everyone else is getting better. Dallas is going to get better, and yes, I know there's a whole Jalen Brunson thing that you guys talked about at the top of the show. They're still, they still have Luka Doncic. Memphis is a very good team. The Clippers look right now like they are a very good team <laughs> in, in contending in the top half of the West next year. Where do you even fit the Suns in there? They were the number one seed last year, won 64 games in the regular season. Yet, if you were to list like one through eight of the playoffs right now, I'm not so sure that you wouldn't have them as a play-in team next year. Wow. Uh, uh, Courtney is right about, you know, Zion Williamson in New Orleans. They're going to be better. Oklahoma City, a terrible team. They Good drafting. Great they draft. be the, yeah. uh, throw in Denver with Murray. I mean, 100%. Barry, uh, the, the, you got to figure the Clippers. Wall, Wall goes there. Uh, Kawhi, Kawhi maybe hope. plays 40 games. Mm -hmm. Can we expect that? How about 35? Maybe, maybe right. 60. Right. <laughs> maybe. Right. You got him too. We'll see. See. Courtney's right. We, it's yeah. a very tough conference. It's desperate it to be relevant. <laughs> I just can't kill him. But Jalen Brunson's a nice player, and I know he played great against Utah, and I know he averaged 60, but it's still Doncic's team. I mean, he's going to make them that much better. They're going to move heaven and earth and give him $110 million, bring the father in and everything else <laughs> to, to go out there and to make Brunson their, you know, the sort of the poster boy of the franchise. I mean, I, you know, I know they probably feel they have to do it. They charge a million dollars for those seats. And it's 19,000 of them they got to fill every day. And it's New York City and it's Broadway need to be, you know, talked about. But, I mean, do we think Brunson is a guy that is going to bring them to a second-round playoff series? That's not – he's not. So, I understand it. Yeah. I'm not sure – I mean, he's not like – if he was if he was a transitional, big-time alpha dog player who you know could be a big piece to a championship, you can see it. He's not that. So the Knicks right now, they have, um, they have 11 first-round picks in the next seven years, eight of which they can trade. So they have eight tradable first-round picks, and they now have $30 million in salary cap space. The Dallas Mavericks kind of decided, from what I've been told about two days ago, that they were not going to be able to pay Brunson. And they are willing to do a sign-and-trade with the Knicks to, send, to help Brunson get to New York. Mm -hmm. The reason that they don't need – the Knicks don't need it now. They've cleared the space. But the reason that's interesting is that when I was talking to league executives last night, they wonder – do the Knicks have something else up their sleeve? Could, because they could still give Brunson an assign and trade and still have maneuverability, and they have these eight picks they can trade. Okay. Is there another player that they're looking at? So I know that they have some interest in DeJounte Murray with the San Antonio Spurs, who teams are calling about, and maybe the Spurs are. DeJounte Murray was an all-star last year. He's still not going to be somebody who walks down the street in New York people are going to recognize, at least not right now. But that would be interesting if they could. Are they after them both? The other thing is, could they do the Brunson deal and then keep those picks in the holster 
for the moment when a star player says, all right, I got to get out of my situation. Because the one thing the Knicks have done, they position themselves to be able to go after a star because their books are relatively clean. Okay. And they've got all these picks. But no star players in the last couple of years have said, I want out of a certain situation. We haven't had that really take place. And so the Knicks are kind of just sitting there with this, this bounty. Do they hold it or do they try to do something in the short term? So the thing that you worry about the Knicks is, so this is going to be a $100 million deal for Brunson. They've got Julius Randle on a $100 million deal. Very nice players, neither of them, as you say, an alpha dog. Yep. They have Evan Fournier on a $70 million deal. Nice player, maybe not even a beta dog, right? Maybe Correct. he's <laughs> erratic. Maybe he's a Charlie he's dog. He's great. Next day, he's not so right. good. Right, okay. R.J. Barrett is eligible for a contract extension of an excess of $100 million this summer. Are you giving him that? Oh, they're giving it to him. Okay, so now we got a, we got $400 million potentially on four guys who individually – I like them all. I mean, I, Fournier set records for the Knicks for three-pointers last year. That's, that's a desirable player. And $70 million is a lot, but it's not like fall on the floor awful. But now they've got $400 million tied up in four guys. Their books aren't going to be as clean. You know? And are those players good enough that if a star comes calling and says, I want to be a Nick, that you could trade? So that's really where the wager is, is that can they be in position when a star player raises his hand? But I'm going to tell you, there's like... People thought maybe Carl Anthony Towns would someday say, I want to go be, I want to go back home, I want to go to New York. Carl Anthony Towns is about ready to sign a super max extension. You know, Devin Booker is about to sign a super max extension. You know, these guys are not coming to the market, and that's what's causing problems. But do all four make an alpha dog? Alpha puppy. Alpha puppy. <laughs> I mean, I no, it, seriously, makes, though. it makes 43 wins. Right, exactly. Yeah. But, but to Chris's point and to Brian's point, mm. if you're going to be a Jalen Brunson, are they expecting him to be an alpha dog? Yeah. Because they don't have it right they now. They can't. They can't. There's but, no but, way they do. I, I know there's no way they can't. But these are the New York Knicks, Wendy, that we're talking about, mm. that they have higher expectations for people. When they signed Evan Fournier last year, they made it seem like he was the second coming of Larry Bird. From that standpoint, I'm thinking, well, I've seen Larry Bird. He's no Larry Bird. Fournier is a nice shooter, but he's a 2020 guy. He can score 20, give up 20 on any, in any given notice. More than ever before, the Knicks are always going to be a franchise at the crossroads because they overinflate the expectations of players that aren't superstar players. Yeah. To your point, Mad Dog, he's a nice player, Jalen Brunson. Is he a difference maker? No. Can he be a difference maker next to Luka Doncic? Sure. It helped. Yes. He, yeah, there's no doubt. That's why Dow said, you're asking for too much money. We're not going to do that when we got Christian, when we got Luka Doncic. We can find a Jalen Brunson yes. not at $25 million per year when it comes to a contract. The Knicks are basically telling everybody, this is our big free agent signing because they know, Wendy, they can't get anybody else. Maybe. Maybe there's something else. I, and I wish I could say, oh, yes, I know what's coming. But right. there might be something else that they're doing. Mm. And the Nick issue is with getting free. First off, nobody wants to play in New York City because Apparently the fans not. and the media are going to go crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number two, the weather's lousy. <laughs> and that's a factor. They don't want to play. In and number three, the training camp is 35 miles away. In and that's yeah. a two-hour drive in traffic on the Hutchinson River Parkway. I, do it. I just did it this morning. It's two hours. So nobody wants to go have their training camp and purchase and then play the games at Madison Square Garden. That's a good point. It's yeah. a major. Yeah. Uh, that's a, and, uh, you know, there's a reason why Durant and Irving and LeBron and Kyrie and, and Kawhi mm -hmm. didn't come here. Right. Yeah. The Knicks are doing. You know what the Knicks are doing? They're doing their damnedest 